name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today I'm going to go through my make nine goals for last year and which ones I achieved. So there are nine things I have on my list that I wanted to achieve and I actually did all bar one so I didn't do too bad and I also had an auxiliary list which I achieved four off so I didn't do too bad. So the first thing I've got to show you is my Vogue coat which is the V9037. And it's a pattern that I've been wanting to do for ages. And here it is. So this is the coat that I made. And I used a wool and viscose blend that I picked up from Guthra and Garni. And the trouble with buying fabrics online is that you can't feel them. And when it came, actually, it was a little bit rougher than I expected it to be. But I think it's okay. And it's my first sort of coat make. So I was quite pleased with how it came out in the end. So the pattern itself didn't say to line it, but I just sort of worked out how to line it myself. So I used a pale blue grey for the lining fabric and then I did some binding around the sides and a floral fabric just to finish it off a bit. The pattern itself, like I said, it doesn't actually have instructions for a lining, but I just thought that because this was quite a rough fabric as well, I really needed to line it. The trouble with having these big collar pieces, if it's hanging in the wardrobe, it sometimes can get a bit creased, I think, even though I've hung it up on quite a thick coat hanger. The pattern itself, actually, I ended up modifying it quite a bit in that these there was some sort of weird darts down the around the front and on the, also on the back of the garment that were then they weren't sort of all the way up and down there was just sort of a, an expanse here where it was sewn together and then it sort of gaped at the top and the bottom so I ended up sewing those up into a more sort of diamond shape um, dart so I did add some loops that I made from crocheted thread to keep the belt in place so that it didn't sort of get lost or separated from the coat and that's about it really it was a bit of a pain to be honest to get it to fit how i wanted it to be because i had to modify those darts quite a bit and i think it would have looked better if i'd done the modifications before but i didn't realize how sort of bulky that those type of darts would look but i've modified it now to a state where it's sort of wearable but there would be some modifications that i'd make to the pattern if i did make it again i'd probably make it out of some double knit fabric and use it as a sort of dressier cardigan really rather than a coat itself this particular pattern but I do like the sort of shape of the points at the front I think I would have been better actually choosing the longer version of the coat because it sort of sticks out at the back but I think it looks like it's supposed to be like that so we're okay <laughs> so I'm going to pop in some footage of me prancing around in the lounge So second on my make nine list for last year was a skirt and it was like an asymmetric panelled skirt but I did actually change my mind. I was thinking I don't know if I really want it anymore so I've, I've swapped it for the Fior skirt. So this is a lovely pattern by Closet Core Pattern which is a sort of wrap over skirt with a pocket at the side which is very very cool. And the fabric that I used was a beautiful cotton and linen mix and I picked it up from Rainbow Fabrics. So this pattern's got three different views, view A, B and C and this is view B which is the wrap over version and it has basically a button on one side so that opens up and it's got a really good coverage um, in that it really folds right over the front panel from both sides. So I used the size 24 um, in the pattern and I basically used the pattern as it is apart from one modification. I just increased the length of the back panels by an inch just to give me a little bit of a larger bum extension there. And it is a lovely, lovely skirt. The only complaint I have is that actually I'd much rather the pocket be on the other side. So what I'm going to do next time is reverse the panels so that I have the pocket on my right hand side because I'm right handed and I think that'll be a bit more useful. Thank you. 
Number three is the Upton dress by Cashmereette. And it is a fancy, um, well this version is fancy because I made it out of some black satin. But it's quite a fitted bodice with a flared out skirt and with pockets, which I think is absolutely brilliant. So having pockets in a dress that's more for going out, I've never really had one like that before, so that's quite exciting. I used the expansion pack for the Upton pattern and did these little cap sleeves and I chose the v-neck version of the top because there's loads of different sort of variations that you can choose for the Upton dress. The skirt, there was one that had some pleats at the front but I chose the one that was a smoother finish so that it would be a bit more flattering on the waistline. And I'm quite pleased with how I sewed it. The only thing that I need to redo really is the binding around the bottom of the skirt. So I used some satin bias binding which I've never done before and what I did is that I actually pressed it so that it was completely folded in half and then stitched it and then folded it up again if that makes sense. So I ended up um, instead of leaving the bias tape sort of quite open and wide then it ended up folding up more and because there's more bulk in the hem it sort of pokes out in some places instead of being a nice smooth finish so I just need to unpick and rehem it using the bias tape in the proper way instead of doing it the sort of quilting version. So that's how the dress looks on the hanger but I will pop some footage which I took when I first made the dress it, when I did some twirls in the garden so that you can see it better on. So number four on the list is the Hollyoke dress and this is also a pattern by Cashmereette and it's basically like a summer strappy dress and you can make it so it goes right down to the floor if you want to. This version that I made was made in some really inexpensive viscose fabric that I picked up from Rainbow Fabrics and I've worn this quite a lot and um, you can, <laughs> it is it's starting to wear a little bit but it's still uh, nice to wear. I think viscose is always less durable than more cotton fabrics and things. So I was really pleased with the fit of this version so I decided to make a second one and here it is. So this one I made out of some gorgeous sea salt fabric which is a much more expensive cotton linen mix fabric and I basically made exactly the same dress again but just in a cotton linen mix and it was interesting to see the difference in the drape of these two. So the modifications I made on this pattern were I did an inch extension on the length of the back of the skirt for a large bum adjustment and I also reduced the length of the whole skirt by about two inches all the way around so that it would fit me a little bit better. So I will pop videos of when I first made these dresses where I did some twirls in the garden so that you can see the difference between the two dresses. So the fifth item on the list was the Tobin sweater, also a cashmere pattern. And this one drew my attention because I loved this collar. So I used some pink double knit fabric and some sweater knit fabric to do this neck bit to, as a contrast. But I do think that because I used a sweatshirt material weight fabric, it is a little bit sort of thick and a bit hot around the neck really. I think I should have stuck to this sort of weight fabric all the way up to the neck. I wanted to use this little piece that I'd got in my stash. 
So the Cashmere Tobin sweater has got some darts in the bust, which gives nice shaping. And it can be, it, it's sort of a nice shaped version of a sweatshirt rather than it being too baggy. I used a three quarter length sleeve, but there are some add ons for a sort of a cuff on the end there. But I prefer things to be three quarter length because I don't like really long sleeves. And I pretty much used the pattern how it is. I did grade between sizes, I think, but there was no other proper modifications I did to the pattern. So this is the first version I did. I'm a little bit unsure of these, the way these two fabrics go together, but it is quite a cosy jumper, but it is very hot with the sweatshirt material around the neck. I have made a second version of this one. And this one is in some gorgeous Liberty print sweatshirts fabric all over. And I basically used another version of the pattern that you can have without the neck, but you're supposed to still have the color blocking, but I actually just taped the pieces together so that I can make it all in one color because I just thought that this fabric was really lovely. It's a Liberty print um, sweatshirt material, which I just love those bright pinks and little bits of purple in there. So that, I think this was my favourite one of the Tobin sweaters that I've made, just because it's a little bit more wearable, not having the big neck on it. I like to have the option of putting a scarf on if I do get cold. But I do like the fit of this. The cashmere patterns I find um, a lot easier to fit because you can choose different bust sizes, um, which is ideal for people who've got a bigger bust like me. The next make on my list was also another cashmere pattern. Obviously last year I was going a bit cashmere mad. <laughs> and these were some leggings. And this is called the Belmont leggings. And the fabric that I used was from Abacar in Shrewsbury. And it's a really, really lovely, stretchy, soft material that I thought would be ideal for leggings. And I made this pattern up, but actually this is quite big on me. I liked my leggings to be relatively tight and they just felt a little bit sort of saggy. <laughs> That's the word. So I do need to modify the pattern a little bit. I do want to revisit it again. The shape of the pattern itself is really good. I just need to take in the seams a little bit more. So I'll probably just unpick these at some point and make them so that they're wearable because they're a lovely soft, soft fabric. And it's like a gray mild um, print to it, which I think is really lovely. So I sort of, I didn't do an 100% wearable version of these, but um, I definitely need to revisit it and modify the pattern slightly. I did pick the measurements um, as per the pattern described, but it might be because of the material I chose. So the next thing on my list was the Romy t-shirt or dress by Tilly and the Buttons, and I chose the t-shirt version. This is how mine came out. I do find that the neck is just needs a little bit of modification. I think that the shoulder seams seem a little bit too wide for my shoulders, but also because I tend to have it quite tight around the bust and it being baggier at the top, it makes it look more ill-fitting. So if I gave myself a little bit more room around the bust area as well, I think it would probably fit better. But it's still wearable and I did actually wear it over Vlogmas, so I did I took some footage then, so I'm going to pop that footage here so that you can see what it looks like on. This gorgeous fabric is an art gallery fabric, stripy material and I just love this blue and white. It's so, so summery and bright and cheerful. Uh, really nice quality fabric. Um, but I am going to go back to this pattern and do some little bits of modifications, just making the bust a little bit bigger, just to accommodate my larger bust and taking the shoulders in a little bit more. It was a di little bit difficult to pick the sort of size and shape that I wanted to start with. I've got a bodice that I drafted for my sizes and I placed that over a pattern so that I can choose the size. But because it's got this overlapped bit here, it was harder to make sure I'd chosen the, the correct one. So I'm going to take the pattern pieces in a little bit of the shoulders as well. So number 
eight for my Make Nine last year um, was the Indigo Top and Dress by Tilly and the Button. I chose the top version and this particular one I did the flouncy sleeves because I just love the look of them. They're not exactly the most practical things though because you have to be careful you don't get them in things. <laughs> oh dear. So I love, love, love the shape of this though. The there's a seam across here where the sort of skirt portion is gathered into it even though this is a top it's a sort of shorter version of it but there's still some gathers there to give you lots of room at the bottom and that's the same on the back as well and I love this version so much I wanted to try out um, some different versions of the same pattern so for this version I used some Visco Chalet and this one is a Dashwood fabrics so that I picked up from Plush Addict which I think is a really lovely print. So I did make several of these because I love the pattern so much. And the next one I made was in this gorgeous Siamese cat fabric. How cute is that? <laughs> and this is actually a polyester, which I don't normally go for. And I was a bit concerned as to whether it was going to be a bit hot. But I think in the sort of autumn, winter, this is absolutely fine. This is exactly the same pattern except for I did the straight sleeves instead of the flouncy ones and this is a bit more practical I suppose but I still love that shape where it's gathered just under the bust, it's really really flattering. I also made a third version. This one is probably my favourite. This is a Visco chalet that I picked up from Fabrics Galore, but it was a few years ago, so I doubt that they've got any more. But it is the same sort of front panel as sort of skirt panel on the top, but with short sleeves, and then I've done the button back as well. So these details were part of the expansion pack for the Indigo top that I purchased separately. And I just love the way that it just gives a little bit more detail with the buttons across the back. I used some black plain buttons which go really well with the heart detail I think. So I do have some footage that I took over Vlogmas which I'm going to pop in now of me doing twirls in the lounge with all the Christmas decorations so beware of that. So number nine was actually going to be me copying this cardigan which is a shop bought cardigan and it's got like a, a drapey front and I was going to copy it and I did purchase this fabric from Minerva Crafts which is some inexpensive ribbed fabric which is like a polyester viscose mix I think but I was just going to try out with some inexpensive material to see if it would work but I didn't actually get round to it. I probably will get round to it this weekend so I'm very close to doing the make nine. But I did have some auxiliary patterns that I wanted to put, that I put on my list that I wanted to do. So first of all was the Eve dress by Sew Over It and I made two versions of this. Absolutely love, love, love the shape of this pattern. I just feel like it's so, so flattering. And I, so far I have two versions but I am planning on making many more of these just because I absolutely love them. So both of these versions have the floaty sleeves and the uneven hemline where it's longer at the back than the front because I love that shape. But I will in the future try the version where you have the straight um, bottom skirt and the three quarter length sleeves as well. I have heard though that the sew over its sleeve can be quite tight so I'm gonna make sure that um, I compare it to a pattern that I know fits me. So that's those two and I'm going to pop in some twirls that I took over the summer when I first made these so you can see what they look like on.
So with the Sew Over at Eve dress, the size range actually is relatively limited and I know that I had to grade up very slightly to get it to fit me, but just because it was, I'm literally just one size out of the range, I don't mind sort of purchasing the pattern. Um, but I believe now that the newer patterns that they're releasing are a bit more size inclusive. I did decide that I wanted to do the penny dress by Sew Over It as well and I made two versions. So the first version I made was out of this gorgeous Lady McElroy cotton lawn and I just fell in love with this. Just such a beautiful, beautiful print and um, the penny dress has got a half circle skirt on the bottom and it's got quite a simple shirt on the top so if you haven't made a shirt before I think that um, that one is quite a good one to start with actually. So that was version number one. I did make some modifications where I extended the length of the bodice just to accommodate for my bust at the front and I did a large bum adjustment by adding an inch to the length of the back of the skirt as well as grading out to one size bigger than the pattern actually measured for. So and then I decided that I needed a Christmas one. <laughs> So I have one with snowmen all over it. <laughs> the change that I made on this second one that is I did actually add another inch to the length of the bodice at the front here just because it was a little bit on the high side and I'm really happy with the way this one fits. Um, this one I do think that it could have done with that extra inch but I now I'm completely happy with the pattern. So that's another one of my auxiliary lists. <laughs> So next on the auxiliary list <laughs> was the Joni dress by Tilly and the Buttons and I've made two of these so far. So this one is the one I made first, it's got a really nice knot detail at the front here. It is a jersey dress. I did make some modifications to make it a little bit bigger for the bust for this one but it still wasn't adequate enough for me so I so I'd made some modifications that gave me a bit, a little bit more depth first of all but it was a little bit short here still and I needed to extend this part of the top as well so I slashed the pattern here and just extended it a bit on either side of the bust as well just so that the extending here wouldn't just make this higher and higher neckline if that makes sense. So when I made this one though I did decide that actually I could have done with another inch on that centre seam here. This fabric I got from Fabrics Galore and it's a gorgeous floral print. It's got a quite a spacious skirt on this dress which is really lovely. No pockets though, I might have to try and see if I can get some pockets in my next version. So after I did some modifications to the pattern I meant then made this one with another inch here so that it accommodated for my bust a little bit more. I made this dress out of some gorgeous gorgeous fabric from Elsa Fabrics. Um, they're on Etsy and they have their own website as well and I just love this it's so so summery. So I've got some footage of me wearing both of those dresses of me in the garden. So last on my auxiliary list for last year was the Darling Ranges dress and this is a gorgeous gorgeous pattern by Megan Nielsen Designs. I again I used my bodice that I drafted for myself to place over the pattern to pick the size to make for this dress. I do think actually after wearing this a little bit that I could have done with going down a little bit 
in terms of sizing it might be because viscose stretches slightly though i do find that the v at the front is actually a little bit low and the seam goes just it goes over my shoulder bone so it's it's too wide at the shoulders as well so i do need to modify the pattern i think what i'm gonna do i think is put the pattern pieces over the dress again just to see if it has stretched a little bit but it is a lovely lovely pattern and I really want to make a chambray version of this as well. It has a tie at the back so that you can cinch it in to give yourself a little bit of shape and I just I love this button detail and the nice simple binding around the neckline. It's just a really lovely design. So I've got some footage of me prancing around the garden in this one as well when I made it in the summer. So those are all the things that were on my make nine and auxiliary lists for last year thank you so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more bye